military might, but the country's winning the information war. Michael Birnbaum from the Washington Post joins us now to talk about the information warfare that's going on. Michael, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Uh, you spent years in Moscow and Europe covering uh, the region. Tell me a little bit about how the two sides are trying to uh, really manipulate public opinion. Well, um, what we can see right now is a, a very effective campaign on the part of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and also um, more broadly on the part of the Ukrainian side, uh, working on Twitter, working on speeches that Zelensky is doing to Western audiences, including the U.S. Congress yesterday and um, the two days ago, excuse me. And um, he is a former comedian who uh, brought a lot of his uh, comedy production company into the top jobs in the Ukrainian presidency with him. Uh, that has turned out to be extremely effective for public messaging in the middle of a crisis. And he's been um, connecting with people in plain spoken, emotional language, incredibly effective in uh, ginning up support for the Ukrainian side. The Russian side is, of course, also uh, engaged in its own messaging, uh, but it's banned a lot of uh, the Western social networks inside Russia, uh, access to that. Most of their messaging is directed to their own people who um, are not necessarily in support of this war, uh, but they are being told by the Kremlin that um, this is this is an important war to protect Russia and denazify Ukraine in Russian terms. The president making a plea to Congress and things like that. How has this helped, though, as far as the, the war? They were in the war as far as information, but how has this helped as far as donations and other things, you know, military help? Well, so uh, what Zelensky himself is doing is speaking directly to leaders, uh, legislators, as we saw in Congress. But, for example, a couple of weeks ago, he uh, dialed in and sort of did a, a video conference with the leaders of the European Union uh, in the middle of a closed door session that they were uh, having a discussion about what kind of sanctions to impose on Russia and whether to impose sanctions. I spoke to a couple of the people who were in the room uh, when he called in and he made a very direct appeal saying, you know, Ukrainian lives, Ukrainian soldiers are, are losing their lives on behalf of European democratic ideals. Um, you need to do something for us. And I was told that that uh, appeal left some of the leaders in tears mm -hmm. and they ultimately imposed far stronger sanctions than they had initially been planning. So and Zelensky it, it has, has been yielding, yielding dividends. Yeah, there are dividends there. I just wonder if any of it's enough to move Putin in any meaningful way. Well, um, what the Ukrainians say they need right now is weaponry. And um, so it's not just sanctions. Sanctions certainly are biting the Russian economy. The idea behind them is that they could affect his calculus. Weapons certainly also increase the costs on the Russian army. Uh, the Russian military has not been advancing as nearly as fast as it was clear military planners in the Kremlin expected it would. And so um, the Ukrainians would say, as would NATO leaders and President Biden, that uh, the military aid being given to Ukraine right now is, is crucial um, to try to repel what, what Russia is trying to do there right now. And it could be a detriment. It, could it make Putin angrier? Um, that is, uh, uh, you know, Western leaders, I think, are trying to uh, calibrate the aid that they are giving to Ukraine. And they've been very clear. They don't want to be direct parties to this fight. They don't want NATO troops or U.S. troops on Ukrainian soil, um, but they do want to increase the costs to Putin. Um, there was a discussion, for example, about whether to send fighter jets to the Ukrainians. Ultimately, Washington was opposed because they did fear that it would be too provocative mm -hmm. and could uh, drag in uh, Western countries a little more directly into the fight. So there, there, you're right. There are concerns about it. They're mm -hmm. trying to calibrate. We'll see what happens in terms of how Russia and, and Putin, um, you know, make their own conclusions. Michael Birnbaum from the Washington Post. We appreciate your insight. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Sports up next. The Bears.